I'm Tracy Reagan. And I'm Shelton Hall. This is the Contrast Project. Oh my God, it was so good to get back in the studio after being off for a couple of weeks. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, we, uh, we did a few things, we did a couple of shots, we went into town and did that thing with the 5K run. Yeah. Uh, but in order to start out, uh, one, of the, one of the, you know, bad things that happened naturally was the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. Left a big hole in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had she has championed women's rights for the last three decades. Yes. You know, and she worked hard, harder than anybody, really. A uh, small woman, uh, but just had a lot of heart. Yeah. Uh, she tackled cancer three times. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, even went back to work the day after her husband's funeral yeah. in 2010. And uh, now they're trying to push through a Supreme Court nominee. As a matter of fact, they're having the confirmation hearings today as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and the woman that they're going to put in there is ultra-conservative yes. and has a long history of being in the... Uh, People that pray, mm -hmm. a lot of them. Oh, yeah. uh, they, they're an ultra, ultra conservative, radical uh, Christian movement. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's it's said that the, the movie The Mermaid's Tale, Handmaid's was, Tale. <laughs> Handmaid's Tale yeah. Mermaid, the Handmaid's Tale was based on them. They actually did have uh, kind of like the women that were in the group, the elder elder women, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically. Uh, Lydia. They, they were like the, you know, the, uh, uh, minor, not, they, they would help out the other, the younger ladies as they were coming out. Yeah. And, and they were called the handmaids. Yes. Yeah. And this judge, this justice, uh, Bartlett, she is, Barrett, yeah. she is, was a handmaid. Mm -hmm. And she has openly said, uh, several times, uh, and even had it written in some of the legal papers mm -hmm. that, first of all, she thought that uh, uh, well, everybody kind of in the South kind of still feels that way, really. The, uh, you know, the, the man is the head of the house, yeah. and the wife is to be subservient to him. And you'll still hear that in Baptist churches. Yeah. Uh, and, and all decisions should be made by the husband. Now, they got like seven kids. Yeah. Um, Most of which it has. Oh, yeah, they did. They they uh, adopted two Haitian kids. Yeah, and it's Amazon Prime Day. Haitian kids. There, there may be some Haitian kids. Yeah, you know, since it is Prime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and she, uh, uh, she's she's the, the polar opposite of what Notorious uh, RBG was. Right. The polar opposite. Yeah. She said in papers that she wants to abolish uh, Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. She wants to uh, abolish the Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. and, and and you look at all this, and you already know that Trump has been stacking the courts. Yeah. So he's trying to stack the Supreme Court now, sure, to give a, a disadvantage to mm -hmm. more liberal-thinking justices. Of course. And they're gonna they're gonna overturn years of stuff that yeah. RBG did. Yeah. Uh, we were talking before uh, that. Uh, it's as recent as 1972 yes. that women couldn't have their own credit card. Right. Uh, a woman couldn't buy a car mm -hmm. without her husband co-signing. Right. She couldn't get a mortgage. In most states in 1972, even certain personal reproductive choices were... Oh, oh absolutely, absolutely. Um, the uh, Several states at the time, you couldn't even have a female judge right. of any kind, even in the lower courts. Mm -hmm. No female judges. And so RBG was, she was the, you know, champion of all that, really. Uh, she wrote several papers. She wrote, she wrote some of the, uh, the best decisions on the court, mm -hmm. some of the best dissents that were written on the court. That's probably why they called her Notorious RBG. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, and she wore that nickname well. Yeah. She did. She did. Well, she, you know, for Miss, Miss Cody, yeah, number one, good for her for adopting the kids. That's enough. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, the Coney uh, supporters are often trying to put her, even though she's politically opposite of RBG, trying to put her in the, in the lineage of RBG. The theory being, you know, 
poorly picked. Sometimes a woman chooses to have positions that are anti-women, and that is a, a thing for the women to fight on with and love each other. This lady, Kobe, or Kobe or whatever, she, you know, she doesn't like love. Well, she doesn't even like sea urchin, though. That's how close <laughs> she is to her. She's averse to the fishy stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a very strange situation, and, you know, this whole concept of her being subservient and Maid's Tale thing. It's called Rose Cabo, which is called. There, it is very much like the Maid's Tale. The production values are way worse, but, you know, <laughs> the, the writing is terrible. The yeah, acting is terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the idea of her being subservient, I'm very curious because, you know, the media hasn't really talked much, that much about her. But it's like, this woman's a, a federal judge about to be on the Supreme Court because she'll probably get through. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. probably will. All the way she doesn't get through is if there's some kind of like national or disaster or something. Every single Republican in that, yeah, in that confirmation hearing. But if she's vote for But if she's subservient, like, what the hell is like her husband doing? Like, what's so cool about him that she's subservient to him? Because with, with Ginsburg, you know, Gins, you mentioned her going back to work after her husband died. The two of them, like, it's a, that's a really wonderful story. Like, Ginsburg's husband, I think, was one of the best political husbands in the modern era. I would compare him a lot to, say, um, Dennis Thatcher, one of Thatcher's uh, husband. They met as young people. They were both on the same... But, you know, Dennis Thatcher was a businessman. He never messed around with politics, but, you know, a strong man who didn't repress his wife, didn't hold her back, but was literally there to support, right. to help her you know, get better. You know, her getting on the Supreme Court, making it that long, they were already 35 years in their marriage by the time she got on the Supreme Court. She might not have gotten there without having, you know, a husband that wasn't a source of stress. Right. You know? Well, that's a thing with, with love, you know? Sometimes the people you love the most can be the biggest drags on your spirit, on your, on just your mental health, on your ability to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish in your career and your life. Right. Uh, and and you can imagine what it would be like to be married to a Supreme Court justice. Yeah, it, it, it would. I mean, it, it would simply take up all the time. Yeah. Uh, so you got the level of the level of stress. And oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And 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 even even off the clock, mm-hmm. as it were, that they'd be constantly reading. Yeah. Constantly reading. And you know, as a as someone who supports the feminist movement. But it's still, I'm very much opposed to um, Blair Cunningham's um, record and opposed to the things she would do you know, on the Supreme Court. I would hope she, that she doesn't get onto the court, but there's not much that can be done about it. I, it's not, I feel as a man, it's not a place at all to speculate about how a woman chooses to balance her work, career, and family matters. But she does have seven children, right? And you know, I'm not not to criticize, but I am I am fascinated about how just in life in general how can they balance the, that. The kids are a little older; mm-hmm. they're, they're not babies. They're a little bit older, yeah. And you would certainly assume that between the two of the husband and wife, there they're making enough coin to get a nanny, yeah, <laughs> like the Congress. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I know. I mean. I mean, there's that. Well, you know, you can't you can't knock her for that. Now, I'm fortunate in life, like, you know, all of my children are actually older than me. You know, so they were already accomplished well before I was born. <laughs> so there wasn't a whole lot to do. It's 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 a weird tax situation. We never know who we're calling as dependents, but it worked out well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Contrast Project, TV show. Oh, and I'm here with my good friend, longtime friend, Mr. Ball Jones. What's up? He is a, a rapper, a cultural ambassador here uh, from the city of Florida. Yeah, city of Florida yeah. is where he's from. And uh, I love that city. Yeah, it's a great place. Yeah. A lot of good stuff going on. Like the uplift is really cool. 
He and I are longtime friends, and we are collaborators now on a new project called the Uplift, which is being done through the uh, Relevant app. And I'd like to throw to you real quick and tell me a bit, first of all, about the Uplift from your perspective. Okay, the Uplift um, is a new social media app based on your local group. So people are usually around you, but most people that comment and talk to you on social media, they're literally in your uh, 100 mile circumference or radius. This app enables you to reach those people with inside of your radius. And when people come from out of town, they automatically are interjected into your community based on vibes, like creating uh, what you're into, creating a page for that that lives on, under your profile. So just like Facebook, you have like your Facebook fan pages uh, on on this particular app, you're creating a vibe for your people to follow and see you and what you're doing. Yes. Like, we you know the Facebook algorithm kills everything. Your, 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 your grandma, you're a rock star, but your grandma and auntie are commenting on all your posts. Like, but the algorithm doesn't show the people who should see it what should what they should be seeing. Yeah. So inside of Relevant, you can uh, create a vibe with people in your local area yeah. and communicate with them inside of that and give them access to you they might not already have. You can be very specific. Thing. You can cultivate a very strong niche market. Right. Where no, one, no one's there that isn't motivated or right. wants to be there. So if you're discussing a particular topic or you're planning a uh, get-together at a particular place, right. you know that everyone that's involved with it is very much motivated to be there. Definitely. Yeah. So if I say, if I, with, with the relevant app, I can, inside of my vibe, I can say, yo, I got a show today. Or come to this address and you can see this show. And when you get to that address, I put my, my, uh, messaging within a mile radius and when you get in it you hear the other message that my show is actually in this warehouse over here and there's no walker buys walker ups yeah. they have access to you and what you're doing um i think that's the dopest thing about this relevant app based on the local thing but the other thing i'm really excited about is what i was able to do with the uplift with you yeah. you know um we created this interface that connects people to black business in the community wherever they are I have plenty of white friends yeah. that would love to support black business mm -hmm. and they don't know where they don't they don't hang out like that. They don't know where any of the restaurants restaurants are. Yeah. And with this uh particular uh interface called the uplift, you can find black business wherever you are in the world. And that's the goal to populate this app with black business so the economic disparity isn't there when these black businesses open up shops that aren't patronized and they end up having to shut down mm -hmm. because nobody knew they were existed. Right. But they had them banging ass wings there. Yeah. Now, and now that recipe, that family recipe that's been passed down yeah. is gone. Well, with the uplift, we can change all that. Everybody. Like, uh, you see problems wrong with the world, um, you fix them. And the, well, what we were able to do is create a tool that makes it easy um, for those people to access. They go to, to the uplift, they want to support black, they go to the uplift, and it's easy to support black. Versus saying, I want to go to a black owned restaurant, um, go to Google. You're not going to find it there. Yeah. Yeah. And with the traditional media, a lot of times people go out there and they want to support black, and they end up supporting like charcoal gray. Right. Or, or like slate gray. Right. You know? And it's, or ebony and ivory. Right. <laughs> you know? And it's like, that's, you know, put that on your taxes. It's a lot to deal with. Oh, and man. I've known you, we've known each other for, gosh, 20 years. I, mean, yeah. I, first, met, I first met you, I think probably... You were 97 to yeah. 99, 
uh, as molecule, right. you know, as a member of the legendary East Unit. I yeah. I remember there were a couple of games East Unit would play with. Uh, oh, not a uh, deep rooted. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like those groups. I, and the, the 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 dope thing about that is I brought uh, like I was East Unit was kind of the mainstream rap and. The underground hip hop scene was straight backpack, mm-hmm. but I was like the bridge between those two communities because I was actually from this street, yeah. and I loved real rap, authentic rap music um, from New York, like we were okay. talking about. So because that's where I was from, that's yeah. what I was used to. So um, having being able to immerse myself into this community with catch. Uh, that were rapping like New York cats. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't even say like New York cats were rapping uniquely Florida, but was accepted by uh, all the underground cats. Yeah. Like it's, it's like this underground thing in hip hop. Like you know when somebody's dope, you don't argue with it. You Florida's know, always had kind of a, a hybrid style. Right. You'd have your New York cats, your Atlanta cats. You had like some of your island cats, mm-hmm. and, I remember, and you were a big part of really coalescing. I remember during the elevations era that mm-hmm. we were doing with uh, Section Eight Magazine, yeah. thing we used to do. Shout out to G. Jerome Jones out there in Barbados. Shout out to Lord Monster Ty yeah. down in Miami. Shout out to Liam Happenstance down. Oh, there. I know all them. Cats. Shout out to Alan Justice, rest in peace. Oh, man. And we would have those elevation shows. I know that some of those things you'd have East Unit, you'd have Deep Rooted, you'd have Willie yeah. you'd have Peyton Rock, yeah. you'd have Tough Junkie, you'd have Astro Bowers, yeah. you'd have like Ian Triclops, wow. and Ajays, all of them in the same era, area, the same era and area. Yeah. Yeah. And the question for you would be if you could go back in the time machine 20 years mm-hmm. ago with the technology that exists today, okay. say the relevant app. How would the relevant app, as an intellectual exercise, oh. be useful for the scene we first came up in like back then? Yeah. The relevant app would be, like, if, if I can go back in time with the relevant app to um, when I first met Peyton Locke at a Beware Jam. We, we we rest in peace, my brother Peyton Locke. We, um, we met each other at one of Matt, Matt Smith's Mm-hmm. Parties, hater free VL parties. Yeah, it was before, way really before hater free. Yeah, this was that's functions entertainment. Yeah, that was before. With, with, uh, with Cupid, uh, Steve, yep. J Snow. Yep, yep. Yeah. J J Pillar and Snow, and um, we uh, we met out there, and when we met, it was like you know, months of yo, you know this cat, oh you, you know this cat, and we built in a community based on what we feel is dope and that there's other people like us. With the relevant app, I could have said, yo, follow my vibe, P. Mm-hmm. Then P would have started his own vibe and everybody would have, like, there would have been a conducive community that worked with communicating. Yeah. We did all of this. The amazing thing about the particular time we were in mm-hmm. is we did this through communicating straight through music. It was like, that was the only thing to communicate with. Communicate if you were cool. Communicate if you were uh, dope enough to hang. Communicate if you understood the language you were speaking. And it was all through the music when we got up. So with the relevant app, Man, it, it, it would be so much easier. I would tell all these cats, Willie Evans Jr., Peyton Lott, to get on my vibe, and we would share what we do mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And it'd be like instantaneous versus what this amazing thing that Willie Evans did, like, last month. I'm just now seeing it today, like, even though I live across town from him, and we might have been talking in this time frame, the vibe uh, enables you to dump your content in there for people that are really interested in you. So, um, and that are close to you. So you can reach out to these people and actually communicate them with them in your space. And it makes it a lot, uh, uh, doper like interactively with how you reach and touch communities and people that are around you so what you're going on on the relevant app is relevant around you 
Mm-hmm. And that's the dopest thing about it. I, that's why I partnered with him to develop this because I saw that and I, and I know how many people come uh, in town and don't know anything. But there's some, there's like Jenkins Barbecue here. There's like Stars Caribbean here. Mm-hmm. These are like cornerstone black restaurants that people have been deprived with tasting this food. And, um, you know, unless they're in the loop, and this is the thing that'll get you uh, out in in the loop without being in the loop. If I'm white and I want, and I love, I just happen to love Caribbean food. Now I can go to the best Caribbean restaurant, and they've got the uplift logo on their window, and I can look on my phone and see what's around me and go there and see that it's not actually that far. But actually, me and my family is gonna go there every Friday now, and then your family is responsible for making a black business successful. And um, I just, I want to give people that too because I know they want it. And people are like, oh, people don't support, people don't, uh, uh, these white people are never going to support my business. I'm like, no, that's not true. You have to give them a way to access it. Okay. You know, I, I that's wrong. I know plenty white people that love uh, restaurants, yeah. black on restaurants. They love fried yeah. chicken. Oh. They love, yeah. they love the, the, the vegan options like tea posh. Yeah. And they would love to patronize them, but it's yeah. hard to find these businesses. And, Anything uh, with mayonnaise, they're ready to just jump on it. All right, man, we'll put extra mayonnaise on it for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> juice. <laughs> mayonnaise. Uh, you know, and the, the crew is always hustling. So, how are you? Uh, been a, a real touchstone for that with a lot of the community doing the Lyricist Live, um, a live freestyle cipher show every Wednesday right. at the uh, Art Walk for over a decade, bringing all types of people together. And I know you have several things uh, that are lined up just in the next few weeks. The Uplift yeah. newsletter will be out on the streets oh. by the time you see us uh, thereabouts. We'll be putting that out. The launch party will be happening soon. And uh, we're going to take a little quick break and, uh, you know, do some push-ups and work on the cardio. And we're going to be back and talk a little bit more about what Mara's working on these next few weeks. Because if you watch this far, clearly you're down to just see everything right. that we're doing. So we're going to party. We're going to pedal party. We didn't even say anything about that. We're going to talk about that. Mm-hmm. It's all about that. Hashtag pedal party. Right. Shout out to Functions Entertainment. Shout out to Steve Bartley. Shout out to, uh, you know, Matt Smith. Yeah, shout out to Robert Potter. Shout out to the creators. Yes. Come to Jack's Blue. Shout out to Ryan Hughes and Josh Hoy. Trina Dockery. So if I say, if I, with, with the relevant app, I can, inside of my vibe, I can say, yo, I got a show today. Or come to this address and you can see this show and when you get to that address i put my my uh messaging within a mile radius and when you get in it you hear the other message that my show is actually in this warehouse over here there's no walker buys walker ups they have access to you and what you're doing um i think that's the dopest thing about this relevant app based on the local thing Hello, everybody. We are back right now. Sheldon here with Mr. Mal Jones. And we wanted to like, take a moment to talk about all the stuff that we've got coming up in the next few weeks. Could you just give us a quick rundown? Definitely, man. Uh, aside from the Uplift launch party, that will be November 14th. Mm-hmm. Before that, um, we have the Hip Hop Halloween. A uh, bunch of dope uh, MCs. You got Tough Junkie, um, Alpha. Uh, me, DJ Shotgun, you got Dell, you got um, Broadway Louie. It's going to be a dope hip hop show. You can come out, bring your costumes and all that. Of course, mask. What more perfect party to go to but a Halloween party, right? So that will be on the 31st. After that, we've got the Uplift Launch Party, me and you. Yeah. Um, that'll be coming soon. Look out for the advertisement. That'll be hitting the airways soon, so y'all be seeing that. Yeah, check um, your mailbox. Yeah, uh, November, November, uh, 
7th, I believe, I'm doing a workshop uh, with Mocha um, on live on stage. I'll be like creating a beat and making a song live with the audience. It should be pretty dope. It's going to be a unique experience because they've never done this with hip hop before. So that'll be dope. Um, and um, I'm, I'm bringing some programming, some of my educational program to the University of North Florida. So it'll be, it'd, it'd be my first time working with them, installing my program into their uh, academia, man. So I'm proud of that. Yeah, and yeah. and that's, that's basically the gist of it until the end of the year so far. So, you know. And you did, I look more at also, you did a couple of things in the last like couple of weeks that are um, also, that you did, and those things are available online for people to check out. Right, definitely, definitely. I, I, I just um, had a drive-in movie event with the creatives, mm -hmm. and the creatives is a group that assembled um, Jacksonville-based artists mm -hmm. that uh, we, we took a, a course together um, that was sponsored by the Cultural Council of Greater Jacksonville, and um, that program spawned us to work together collectively as artists. So we, we do a series of events um, every year. This one was particularly a uh, socially distanced driving style movie event. And we all, we had a national call to artists, man. We had like 300 submissions and we had to uh, go through that, break it down. And uh, we all put our individual art in there. So it was a great two hour film and we're going to be launching another one soon. Um, that's, uh, Jenny Hagar and Lance uh, yes. Vickery, they, they're two good friends of mine, and they spearheaded this thing, um, and it worked out well. So we're looking forward to the next Creatives um, Drive-In Movie event. So, Absolutely. Thank you for telling us about all this. Uh, we will be doing much more stuff of all types and all places. And there's I'll be doing it with you, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, whenever you're watching this, in the future, we are probably somewhere doing something else. So right. you'll hear about that at some point. Thank you very much Yo, for joining us. My brother. Uh, more to come. Thank you for watching The Contrast Project. That's one of these. Okay. Looking at the ceiling. Uplift. The Uplift. LLC. That's right. See y'all soon. we got for today kids uh next episode we have uh the one and only miss uh Shawana brooks coming in all right yeah she'll be in on the next episode she's with the uh six feet away gallery and color jack blue and in the meantime you can find contrast project on facebook and instagram and on youtube and on youtube like share comment and smash the subscribe button smash all those buttons oh,